What's up everybody, I'm back again with another installment of Why Do I Own This? A series of videos where I take a good hard look at the vinyl record collection and give an account as to why I've decided to own these things. And if you want to help me figure that out, I've put a link in the description section below to my Discogs account, which has an up-to-date list of all the vinyl records that I own. You can drop into the comments section below and let me know which of my albums I should answer for, and I think we'll have some fun along the way. My name is Adam McDormand, and this is Medium Quality. So I was reading issue 130 of Prague Magazine, the cover story being about legendary progressive rock drummer Bill Bruford, and the article took me on a bit of a journey through Bill Bruford's prolific musical career as a drummer. And obviously I'm fairly familiar with Bill Bruford's contribution to progressive rock with bands like Yes and King Crimson. But obviously, Bill Bruford's career didn't stop in the mid-70s. He continued to make music after that. And as I was reading the article, I noticed that it pulled at a thread in my musical memory. And that kind of sent me down a rabbit hole. And I ended up taking a dip into the Discogs marketplace and came back up with this. This is Bill Bruford's Master Strokes 1978 to 1985. This album attempts to compile the best of Bill Bruford's musical output after his prog period, but roughly before he went more or less full jazz with his Earthworks project in the late 80s. Uh, most of the songs on this compilation are from the three albums that he put out with the self-titled Bruford Band, which had a killer lineup of musicians. We're talking Dave Stewart on keys, Jeff Berlin on bass, and the indomitable Alan Holdsworth on guitar, and of course Bill Bruford himself on drums. And the whole package here is kind of rounded out by a couple of tracks from Bill Bruford's work with Patrick Mraz, who was also in Yes as a keyboard player, uh, but just never at the same time as Bill Bruford. It was kind of interesting. From the jump, though, Prague fans, beware. This is not a progressive rock album. This is a jazz fusion album. It is not melodic in the way you would expect a symphonic Prague album of the 1970s to be. In fact, uh, probably the most recognizable melodic feature of this entire compilation is the acrobatic guitar playing of Alan Holdsworth. There are times where his guitar playing is so sharply angular that it almost sounds like it's playing against the grain of the music. Uh, but I happen to really enjoy that, and it's probably the main reason that I ended up picking this compilation up. And as I've been listening to this, I've been reflecting on that question. Well, why did I pick this up? Why do I own this? And it occurred to me that I appreciate this music in the same way that someone might appreciate free jazz. It's challenging, it's iconoclastic, but it's endlessly fascinating to me. Of course, you should drop into the comments section below and let me know if you like jazz fusion or if you've ever heard this album. Uh, this is by no means an expensive package of songs. Uh, but it is a very informative one. On the, the back side of this album, there is a selected discography from this time period, which I think would have made a very interesting map of this period of Bill Bruford's musical output in a pre-internet era. Obviously, you can find all this kind of information on forums or even Wikipedia. So let's get to the question. Why do I own this? I mentioned that this pulls at one of the threads of my musical memory all the way back to when I had just started learning to play bass guitar like in 1999. I was a teenager. Someone gave me a mixed CD of great bass players which I talked about on my journey into progressive rock video which you can find on my channel. Uh, there ended up being a couple of Bruford Band songs on that mix CD and I listened to it so many times over the years and I never connected in my mind that the drummer from those two songs 
was the same drummer who was in Yes, which would, of course, in the years that followed, become one of, if not my most favorite band of all time. And one of the two songs from that mix CD is also on this compilation. It's the song Joe Frazier from Side 2. And so hearing this music kind of unlocks a core musical memory for me. I've had a Bruford Band album or two on the shelves in the past, but this is one of those instances where the compilation, in my opinion, is better than any one single Bruford album from this period. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Drop into the comments section below and let me know if there's ever a reason to own a compilation album. Are there instances where that's enough? That's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, keep spending that good stuff. What a time to be alive.